You know, on a beautiful weekend day in the middle of trout season, the last thing you want to be doing is painting the inside of your house. Well, let's say your significant other asks you to paint the front room. Instead of whining or hiding or faking a hernia, why don't you use it as a learning experience? You'll learn that there are over 75 shades of green paint. You'll also discover that two sheets of newspaper covers the average size window. And you'll see the benefit of throwing your dirty laundry on the floor all these years. You'll also find out that if you're over 55, there's a pretty good chance that your pajama bottoms are large enough to fit over a standard floor lamp. <laughs> now, I know that you know what a paint sprayer looks like, but you probably don't realize that the hose fittings are the same size as the ones on your lawn sprinkler. <laughs> OK, you're also going to find out that you want to get out of here before the latex hits the wall. <laughs> And now, if you'd be kind enough to excuse me, I've got some paint to do. Now the second coat. Now while you're waiting for the paint to dry, you can go call a few buddies and brag to them about how smart you are. <laughs> You know that this is the big weekend, the second annual chainsaw race is up here. We mount the chainsaws on on a skateboards like this, and uh, boy, these babies ever move, aren't they? <laughs> you tape that throttle wide open, this thing takes off on you. <laughs> Zero to 60 in under five seconds, you know. Even faster if you remember to let go. <laughs> and talk about a crowd pleaser. We could have chainsaw races every month if people would heal faster. Uncle Red! You Uncle Red! Meet the bus. Bus? What bus? The bus. The bus for the intellectually gifted children's club. What? Yeah, yeah, they booked the lodge for the entire weekend. Look, see, it's right here in my Paw Pilot. Well, uh, uh, let me check my Palm Pilot. Oh, yeah, here it is. So what? I can't meet the bus, Harold. I gotta work on my chainsaw for the races. Oh, we got a, we got a whole program planned for these special kids. Oh, yeah? What are you going to do, clean and reload your pocket protectors? No. But we have vegetable cloning. <laughs> yes. And more hammer action figure painting classes and a chance to dress up as your very favorite alien Star Trek character, which is so cool. You know what you should do, Harold? What? You should bring the kids to the chainsaw races. No. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. No. 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 Well, well, you know, it's, it's just that people who are very intelligent have low pain thresholds. <laughs> Spectators would be perfectly safe, Harold. I mean, we're holding up in the dry riverbed up by Rock Reef Point there. And there's absolutely no chance that anybody's going to get hurt. It's time for the Possum Lodge Word Game! Tonight's winner gets a copy of my brand new book. Now, this is for people who find the Four Dummies book a little too complicated. <laughs> Dressing yourself for utter morons. <laughs> oh. Number four. Shoes last. <laughs> okay, Dalton, cover your ears. Red, you have 30 seconds to get Dalton to say this word. Early. Early. Yeah, all right, Winston. And go! Okay, Dalton, you set your alarm clock because you want to wake up... Irritable. Okay, if you're not late, you are... Still alive! No, no. Okay, which bird gets the worm? The big mean one? Almost out of time, guys. Yeah. All right, um, okay, Dalton, what makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise? What, do I look like I know? But, 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 but you do know. Something to bed, something to rise. No, 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 okay. No, 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 no. You know, when you, 
when you go to a party and you get there before you should, you are? Alone. How do you figure alone? Because if I take Anne Marie, I never get anywhere early. That's the future of our country right there. 15 horsepower car with a 300 horsepower radio. And the music's terrible. Of course, that's why they play it so loud, because they know you'd never listen to it if you had a choice. Now, I know as you get older, you're supposed to mature and accept things around you and just keep quiet. To me, that means everybody in the cemetery is about as mature as you can get. I prefer to stay childish. So this time on Handyman Corner, I'm going to strike back by turning this van into the world's largest boombox. Now, they don't build the size of speaker I have in mind, so I have to make my own. How hard can it be? For starters, I need a real big magnet to put on the back of my speaker. So, <laughs> I took every fridge magnet anybody's ever given me, <laughs> and I put them into this metal bucket. <laughs> Different insurance guys, <laughs> pizza delivery places, <laughs> religious fanatical groups. Boy, this is a strong magnet. <laughs> okay, perfect. Yeah, that's right where I wanted it. <laughs> that saved me a little time. <laughs> okay. Now, to make the cone for my speaker, I'm going to use one of these kitty swimming pools. Just give me a minute to inflate this, will you? <laughs> A deal's a deal. There you go. Okay, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. You gotta make an electromagnet on the back of your pool that'll fit over the bucket of fridge magnets, and you gotta do all this without going over budget. So I'm just using this old garbage pail because I don't need this until garbage day, and I figure by then this whole project will be a distant, painful memory. <laughs> then for the electromagnet part, all I'm doing is winding this string of Christmas lights around the outside. These all fell off the roof during that big storm last July. Okay, I'm gonna need some real waters to drive this baby. So here's what I did. I took all the amplifiers out of a bunch of old radios I had, you know, in the rag and down the basement, up in the attic and in the dining room. Wired them all together in series. And I probably got about a trillion gigawatts of power here. <laughs> if it doesn't work out as a radio, make a dandy welder, huh? <laughs> now, of course, I'm not gonna have any music until I turn on the van radio, but I still gotta hook up the speaker, make sure the power's getting through, you know. <laughs> Yeah, good. No, that's no, that's that's all good. Okay, now I just gotta crank the volume on her. Okay, we're ready to rock. <laughs> so remember, if the women don't find you handsome, oh baby, <laughs> they should at least find you handy. <laughs> After you get married, there are things you need to learn that nobody ever talks about. They're not in any manual, and neither your parents nor your teachers are ever going to mention them. So I guess it's my job. Okay, here's the main one. To survive as a happily married man, you have to learn how to sneak food. <laughs> you gotta pretend that when you're getting out of bed in the middle of the night, it's because you heard a clunking sound coming from the basement. <laughs> not because you heard a grumbling sound coming from your own stomach. <laughs> you gotta be able to find the kitchen in the dark. You gotta be able to unplug the fridge so that when you open the door, the light doesn't come on. <laughs> you 
you gotta eat the food real fast. And when your wife calls down to find out what you're doing, you gotta be able to stuff it all into one cheek so that you can answer her without the telltale sound of a mouthful of cold lasagna. Then when you're finished, you gotta be able to hide all the evidence, climb back into bed. And if she starts making advances towards you, don't give in to her. She's not feeling romantic. She's trying to frisk you for Twinkies. <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. <laughs> Man, what's this about? Were you speeding? Speeding? In the possum van, doll? Right. Oh, I left my wallet at home. I got no driver's license. Quick, though, you switch places with me. Okay, all right, okay. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, we're good, we're good. There we go, yeah. Is that a good idea? I think Dalton's been drinking. Well, I have not, Mike. Really? You mean he acts this way all the time? Just get your license out, no. No problem. The cop will be up here any second, eh? Yes. What's taking him so long, anyway? He's probably running a check on the license plates. No, I, I don't think so. So what's the day's date? Uh, it's 14th. You know, I think my license is expired, unless it's till 1997. <laughs> no, that was years ago, Dalton. No. Although your wardrobe implies 1962. Well, what do we do now, guys? Hey, I got a license. Let me drive. All right, yeah. Over there. Ow! Okay, we're fine, we're fine. It'll be smooth sailing from here on. Just let me do the talking, okay? Well, let me see your license, Mike. Yeah, sure. Jesus Rodriguez? <laughs> it was my maiden name. Uh, hello, police? I would like to report a robbery in progress at the main intersection of Port Asbestos. Uh, oh, my name? Um, uh, oh, uh, Jesus Rodriguez. Things running great. <laughs> oh, Uncle yeah. Red, I... Uncle Red, I have a problem. Well, we're all aware of that here. <laughs> I cannot do my job as promotional manager of the Possum Lake area if you continue to stage these dangerous events like the chainsaw racing. You're forcing me to pull rank. <laughs> now, Harold, wait a second. You're not telling me that you're putting your job above the wishes of the lodge, are you? I'm not, but I've had a busload of gifted children put into my care, so I'm putting their safety above the wishes of the lodge. <laughs> uh, okay, no. I know you feel that way, but I'll bet you the kids don't. Oh! I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Thornton! Thornton, come on in here! Okay. <laughs> Looks like the vegetable cloning worked. Are you the man responsible for this irresponsible and sophomoric exhibition? What? <laughs> Talking about the chainsaw races. It sets a very poor example for today's youth watching grown men tearing down trees and polluting the environment. <laughs> I hope you're soaking his parents for this weekend. Do not be mean, Uncle Red. It's very difficult for people of different intellectual levels to communicate. Well, we've proven that for years, haven't we? <laughs> so tell me something, Thorn. Thorn Tun. Thorn Tun, excuse me. Okay, you're a kid. You must see the fun side of chainsaw races, eh? Maybe a few years ago I might have. Oh, yeah? But you can't justify endangering your peers and destroying the ozone all for the sake of your own childish amusement. <laughs> Bunch of us decided to build a little children's area out behind the lodge there. Had a little wading pool, or putting a screen around that, and uh, just kind of make it uh, friendly for the kids. Uh, Winston was cutting the lumber for us, and uh, I was actually, uh, oh, there's Walter putting up the sign for the kitty area, and he had one of those nail guns. Boy, they're, they're quite a unit, aren't they? I was cocking like a save between the screens to keep the bugs in, and then uh, 
Dalton had the, the staple gun kind of jammed and then kind of, oh, oh. oh. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Dalton. Well, it's uh, an eye for an eye and uh, some caulking for a staple. There we go. <laughs> oh, right into Winston's coffee, but it, luckily he didn't see it until he had a sense something wasn't quite right. Then things started to go bad after that. And then the nail gun right into the pool and the water comes out, hits the plug, and then, oh, boy. And, then, and the saw keeps running, the blade's digging in, and away she goes, and the, the saw's heading over towards Walter. So now Dalton says, you gotta give him, that's stupid. You fired that, you hit the pull, and just give me that thing. And he, now she goes into automatic, and now, now we got a real problem. And those are good sized nails, too. But don't forget about Winston, he's lying right in the middle of the battlefield. And Walter goes in there, and this is the kind of thing you have to do at the lodge. Just ignore the fire, and I've seen this in a movie or something, haven't I? But anyway, everything finally settled down. The nail gun stopped, and the area was ruined, but we survived. And what about the saw? The saw I'm, I'm thinking the circular saw is still uh, still on the loose somewhere. And it's, I see. And you know what? Here it comes. Here it comes. Look out. She goes right up the sign. And Okay, now we have a new name. There's two ways to pronounce that. I don't like either one of them. Time for the experts portion of the show where we address those three little words men find so hard to say. I don't know. Those are the words. And uh, joining us today, marina owner and idle curiosity, Dwight Carter. <laughs> All right, uh, fellas, here's the letter. Dear experts, I have recently thought about taking up skydiving and wanted to know if you had any tips. Okay, yeah, sure. Now, every guy has a voice in his head that stops him from doing dumb things. <laughs> Actually, if you're married, you have two of them. <laughs> and the loud one isn't even yours. <laughs> but this voice stops you from doing idiotic stuff like jumping out of airplanes or quitting your job to become a mime <laughs> or sharing your thoughts. Yeah, I agree with you. I think skydiving's nuts. I mean, I have my own business. So if I jump out of a plane and do a face plant into the ground at 120 miles an hour, I'm off work without pay. You're off everything without anything. Well, I like skydiving. I think it's a great sport. You get some guy to suit you up, strap on your chute, and all you have to do is fall. <laughs> Gravity does all the work. And of course, you have to stay loose. And I'm real good at staying loose. Boy, I tell you what, if I fell out of an airplane, I'd be so loose, I'd come undone. <laughs> uh, you'd be surprised. Falling thousands of feet in a few seconds can be very relaxing. Sometimes I fall asleep on the way down. Yeah, but Dwight, you have a very low drowse threshold. <laughs> I've seen you fall asleep water skiing. Well, it's a lot of fun. We have a great time. We? You mean you're not the only wacko that jumps out of that plane? No, no. Junior, Buster, Stinky, and I go every other Saturday. Okay, well, you know something? That's a little bit different. Yeah, that's not so crazy, because if you get a bunch of guys to go with you, it's, it's more like uh, bonding. Okay, well, okay, well, there's our answer. Okay, this viewer, it's great for you to go skydiving, as long as you get a bunch of guys to go with you. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah, but you got to get everybody to check with their wives first and make sure that it's okay. <laughs> And if the wives say no, the guys don't go, right? Absolutely right. And if the wives say yes, I'd say all your marriages are in trouble. <laughs> okay, uh, looks like this is going to be the last year for the chainsaw races. <laughs> You know, ordinarily, we run them just two at a time, like in heats, but we thought it would be a lot safer if we got it over quicker. So we just let all the chainsaws go at once. <laughs> and uh, we were half right it was quicker. Uncle Red! <laughs> what am I supposed to tell the parents when they ask why were their children being chased by chainsaws? <laughs> Just tell them it was part of the camp experience, uh, Harold. I mean, uh, it taught them uh, rock climbing and tree shinnying. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Uncle Red! Look at the size of his head! He's a gifted person! These are gifted children! Well, 
they should be smart enough to get out of the way. You know. <laughs> you know, you know. All right, here, look. Okay, the chainsaw race, it was a dumb thing, and we're never going to do it again. Thank you. But you got to admit, it was kind of funny. And isn't that part of the whole camp feeling, huh? No, no, it's not. Tell him, Thornton. That was so cool, Mr. Green. There we go. Green time, Harold. We go. Wow, can I come? No, well, no. Now, Thornton, Thornton, there are no, no intelligent people down there. <laughs> it's best that I go down and, and you go to chess club, okay? Go to chess club. <laughs> hey, Thornton. Thornton. So if my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting. And you were dead right about the chainsaw races. We're never doing that again. We're going with Belt Sanders next year. <laughs> and to the rest of you, on behalf of myself and Thornton and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge. Keep you sick on the ice. What he said. <laughs> I'm a man, but I can change if I have to, I guess. Okay, man, now, is there anybody who didn't get their chainsaw back? <laughs>